comfort you if you're a conservative? Because let's face it, uh, Donald Trump has never been a conservative Republican. Uh, that's not what he ran as. Uh, he ran as an agent of change. So you're going to get some of what you want, and obviously not all of what you want, uh, because there are some parts of Obamacare that uh, President Trump doesn't mind, like um, you know, to, to being able to insure your kids till they're 26, or the pre-existing conditions portion of it. A lot of things that people aren't comfortable with, but what he's talking about is doing away with Obamacare and replacing it. They seem to think they can do that. They've got a plan in place. Question is, what's it look like? Uh, we're joined right now by Dr. Elena George, uh, who's uh, written several books on this uh, issue and obviously deals with it every day as a physician. Dr. George, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, thank you so much for being our guest today. Um, tell me where what your impression is of wh where we go from Obamacare. Well, I think the most important thing is Mr. Trump won the election, or I should say President-elect Trump won, because that gives us the foundation to move away from the disaster that was Obamacare. I know that a lot of things have come out, but I'm actually going to hold my powder dry, because a lot of things have been said, but they're not coming from him, and we're not exactly sure exactly where, how they're going to change it. So I know one thing he's talked about is keeping the, the um, pre-existing clause and also having children stay on their parents' insurance at age 26. Those are small parts of the Affordable Care Act. For me, as a physician, the most important thing is to get rid of the mandate, because when that happens, people are no longer locked into a system that they hate, and they can start shopping around and becoming consumers. As long as he empowers the free market medicine, direct primary care, allowing people to buy um, insurance across state lines, creating health savings accounts that are not locked into insurance plans, meaning you can save your own money, create your own health savings account, and use it for whatever and whomever you want. That is going to empower the patient to look for a free market, affordable, quality health care, and it's finally going to put pressure on the hospitals and the insurance companies because they'll finally have competition and monopolies will be broken up. And, and which means lower costs. Absolutely. Right now, they lock the market. Here in Georgia, Blue Cross Blue Shield has 80% of the business. And as a physician, I'm now having to drop out next month because I can't, they're playing medical limbo with our reimbursements. I can't afford to stay open and see a Blue Cross Blue Shield patient. But if, my, if those patients can go somewhere else, buy a different, a different plan that covers what we both want you know, for their care to be, they're going to start choosing that, and Blue Cross is going to have to start playing ball. Well, you know, for me, this this election was a relief because it's it's not that Donald Trump was my person from the beginning. Uh, for me, the big issue was what was going to happen with the Supreme Court. But mm -hmm. I would imagine from a from a physician standpoint, you're an ear, nose, and throat specialist, correct? That's correct. So, from a physician standpoint, though, the big issue here had to be if Obamacare continues much longer. I mean, I have a, a a cousin who was a plastic surgeon. He said all of his friends are looking for an exit strategy. There were doctors who were just looking to get out of the business because they couldn't, they weren't sure how much longer they could operate under this. It was so, and it still is, until it changes, it is so rigid. You have to make a choice of whether you want to practice medicine, and that means, you know, selling your practice, becoming an employee of a hospital, or leaving. It was killing private practice. So we had... 80% of doctors were in private practice. We're now down to 30% and dropping. So it's, it's, it's not easy being a solo practitioner. We're now looking at payments delayed for 90 days. Thank God they're starting to come in since the election because the insurance companies were playing chicken with our reimbursements all over the healthcare profession. That's what's been going on. And with this value-added or value-based medicine, that really was designed to finish off private practice because nobody could afford to follow those regulations and guidelines. It, it was ridiculous. And patients were just about to figure out how bad that was. You know, it, a lot of what you're talking about, I've, I've heard Dr. Ben Carson uh, discuss as well. Um, I'm hopeful that he's, I know he's already part of the transition team, but I'm I'm mm -hmm. hopeful that he's somebody that, that Donald Trump relies upon heavily for knowledge on this when he tries to fix it. 
You know, I've heard from well, the National Independent Doctors Association out of Florida. Mr. Trump's team met with them before the election. So he's been, been talking to doctors, independent doctors, who never had a voice in the administration currently, who can actually tell them how it works on the front line. We're not big corporations. We're not making money from the government. We're doing yeoman's work in the field with patients. And we're the people who need to have a voice. And he listened to us. And I believe he will continue to do so. And I'm happy that Dr. Carson's involved because he's also part of these organizations. And we're not talking about the AMA. We're talking about the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. We're talking about the National Physicians Council for Healthcare Policy. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about the Independent uh, Doctors Association. So these are all a consortium of doctors who care. The Hippocratic Oath means something to us. We're not about conveyor belt medicine. We love our patients. And we want, our, we want our profession back. And the fact that he's been taking time to listen to us means a ton. And I think that if he follows our guidelines and we work together, we can bring medicine back to what it should be. Dr. Elena George is our guest. Uh, doctor, what, now let's assume that January 21st of 2017, uh, do, uh, President Trump has a plan in place. Maybe it's what mm-hmm. the House Republicans have already looked at for trying to transition this. Realistically, what is a timeline, though, to to try to untangle what's happened already? Do you, do you Have you given any thought to that? Well, I think it's going to, it doesn't happen overnight. But there are certain things, certain pressures that will be, um, um, you know, loosened once you stop things like the mandate. That means the next month when you can't afford your premium, which I'm sure a lot of people feel, they can drop it. And when they start having free market uh, policies that pop up for catastrophic that are not linked to an insurance company, that you can just buy, use across state lines, people will drive to those, young people, healthy people. And I think people won't lose any, any coverage at all. Just give the market a chance to work and allow people to know what's out there without the feeling of, if I don't carry insurance, I'm going to die, right. which is totally not true. It's been driven by fear and intimidation and anxiety. But I'm here to tell folks listening to your show, free market medicine is alive and well and thriving, and you don't have to be gouged. You can see any doctor you want now. But if you add the government stepping out of the equation and letting the market work and letting people become consumers, and they know it's transparent consumers, because under under um, President Trump's um, guidelines, he wanted both hospitals and doctors to list their prices online. Transparency is the antidote to these high costs. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, and I can honestly say I've never seen something like that before. So that I hope I hope that's I hope that's the next chapter in this story. That's for sure, Doctor Elena George. Thank you so much. Do, is there a way people can uh, read more about uh, your thoughts on this online? Absolutely. I have a website, DrElenaGeorge.com. That's D-R-E-L-A-I-N-A, George like the man's name. I've written a book called Big Medicine, um, The Cost of Corporate Control, or How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. And I also have a radio show, Medicine on Call, Wednesday mornings on America's Web Radio. That's excellent. Uh, Dr. Elena George, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You have a great day. I appreciate that. I wanted to get a physician on here to talk about, you know, what this looks like when it changes, why the, we're getting the fear factor from the left on, well, how can you suddenly tell 20 million people they don't have insurance anymore, which isn't what's going to happen.